guys. I do not know what happened there. It just literally just crashed. My whole phone crashed. I've got plenty of battery. I don't know what happened. Um, but hopefully I will find you will find me here on another video. <laughs> Hello, amazing. As people come, can they just comment and let them know to hop over here that I'm here? <laughs> Quick jump, well done, Anessa. Yay, people are finding me. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys, I don't know what happened. Really don't know what happened there. Let's just wait for people to come over here. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, Lorianne. Hello, guys, sorry about that. So. I don't know what happened, but literally my phone just crashed. Very bizarre. And I can't, once the live um, has finished, I then have to um, re, like, start a whole new other one. Anyway, so you haven't missed anything. Hopefully everyone is popping over. We've lost Rosie. Rosie, are you there? Hi, Stacey. Waiting for Rosie. Has she found us? She just messaged me to be like, we've lost you. Um, don't know why she hasn't found us. Maybe someone could, um, if you comment on the other one, would she see that? I need my work phone. I should have had my work phone with me and then I've got, because I've got two phones. Then I could have been messaging her or calling her to be like, I'm here. Mm. Okay, is everyone else there? No one's commenting or saying anything. Guys, are you there? Oh, what is happening today? The internet maybe, it's just going. Okay, I'm gonna continue. So, hi guys, I don't know what that was about. So here we are, pins going upwards towards the waistband and they're sticking, sticking into, they're pinned into the uh, teeth. 34 people are here. Oh, thank you, Lorian. Thank you. But no Rosie. She'll find us, I'm sure. So um, yeah, zip tape and uh, overlocked edge. You can see there's a bit of overlocked edge that are just, is just peeking out and that's about 1.5 centimeters, which is the seam allowance. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my regular zip foot on. On this machine, it's a single arm foot and I move the needle position. On other machines, you might find that it's just um, it's slightly wider, but essentially it's got the edges kind of open so you can get in close to the teeth. That's what we're aiming for. Okay, Maybe I should get my laptop and email Rosie. Thanks, Kim. You're still there. I'm just thinking. Orientation is locked. Rotate both. There's nothing I can do. If I if I message her, then I will um, lose her. Oh, why do people keep losing me? What's going on? Must be just problems in the village with the internet today. Okay. If anyone can email info at and just say, tell them that I am here because I don't think Rosie's found me. Um, if it keeps cutting out, I don't know what I'll do. I'll have to stop this one and try again, see if what the internet's doing. So guys, um, you may have missed what I'm doing, but we're basically still on that side of the zip and all we're doing is the machine basting. So what we're doing is stitching the zip tape to the, um, to the fabric to get in the position right so that when we go and stitch it nice and close in, um, then uh, you can um, 
you don't have to worry about where the zip is. You know that it's stitched in the right place. So I'm going to stop it just above where my stitching is because obviously I've got that. Oh, great. So over it is back sent email thank you guys thanks for emailing rosie we'd lost you rosie i saw your message come up but i'd already found a new a new video to start oh what dramas i tell you this day and last yesterday we've had some some a bit of hiccups haven't we on our live sew alongs trials and tribulations eh so we're going to take um that presser foot off and we're going to move to a concealed presser foot presser foot so that's the one with the grooves underneath and the idea is that the grooves, um, the teeth of the, um, oops, are oh, the teeth of the uh, zip go into those little grooves. Okie dokie. Right. So I've opened that back. I've opened the zip teeth up. Um, and sort of roll them back and then clamp them into the presser foot. Um, I put my stitch length back to regular because we don't want to be machine, machine, <laughs> machine basting, machine basting this. Now, often I found on my machine, it gets stuck right at the beginning and I do need to give it a bit of a tug to get it through. Um, so, that tug just gets it through that first bit because it's a bit thick that plastic at the top of the zip and so yeah i'm holding quite tightly there i'm just making oh we've got somebody from barbados oh exotic oh oh to be on a beach in barbados you must get sick of people saying that <laughs> um okay so down we go Oh no, <laughs> now it's out of sync. <laughs> Try refreshing guys, Try refreshing your page. Rosie, are you finding that it's out of sync for you? Oh no, it's good for her, great. So, we are just going to stop there, do a little reverse. Trim off all of those. Okay. And then we'll close the zippy. So we can see that's one side done, guys, yeah? Do love a, sa a concealed zip. It's so satisfying. So satisfying because it just looks so lovely and neat, doesn't it? Oh, Lorianne, we're fine now. Good. There's nothing worse than watching somebody talk out of sync. It drives me mad. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to snip into that waist seam so that we make sure that they line up. And if you watch the live sew along for the overskirt, we did exactly the same on that. Um, so that's the size. We're going to now open the zip back and we're now going to be very careful that we don't twist our zip. It's very easy to do that. Because um, what we have to do is bring that zip round around here and I'm just going to quickly pin it and then I'm just going to pin it into position and I'm just going to pull all these trousers through. I find that that's the best way to do it so that you don't twist your zip. That said, <laughs> I've just twisted my zip. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. That is the best way to do it. I love how I doubt myself sometimes. I'm like, oh, no, I basically, I pull it round the garment like that, pin it, and then pull it through. So, um, yes, there will be two videos now, guys. I don't think we'll be able to do it, So, but they'll both be called part two. Or maybe Alex will rename them, I'm not sure. Rosie will let you know. <laughs> but we might have to be part 2A and part 2B. So now that we're on the other side, we've got to make sure that our little notch that we snipped in lines up with the waist seam on this side and make sure you're folding that up towards the waistband because we don't want that to come down okay 
and then carry on pinning your zip all the way in exactly the same way as you did on the other side. So pins going parallel through the zip tape, a little peeking of um, um, trouser fabric out the side. And yeah, parallel and going up towards, whoops it is, is up towards the waistband. So you can see now why you, when you watch live TV, why you need, hello Theresa morning, um, why you need to have um, all these technical people in case things go down. <laughs> There's no technical person here. <laughs> I am the technical person and I'm not very technical, <laughs> not very good at technology. Okay, so we're going back to our regular zip foot and we are going to put the, um, in the zip tape, we're gonna stitch the machine basing through the zip tape again. Move my needle over and we're gonna do a nice long machine basting. Did you line the, yes. I did. So it's not the top of the zipper tape. If I just put, you see that, that's how it's lined up. So that's the crease line that we put in the waistband to mark the middle of the waistband and where it will actually be finished like that. And so the plastic where that stops, that is a uh, stops um, at that folded line. Okay. So the zip tape sticks up. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, that's what I did yesterday. Started sewing without looking. Learn, Lisa, from your errors. <laughs> I'm just like trying not to miss any questions that you might need to ask me. Not when doing a difficult seam, though. to regular uh, stitch length a needle for me back into the middle position let's trim some of these threads off so they don't get in the way and then we will do exactly the same on this side so we're opening that out so peeling back the uh, concealed zip It's just got stuck again, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a yank. There we go. So it's locked into the little tunnel or groove, whatever you want to call it, on the presser foot. And so it can't move now. So I'm just, my cons what I'm trying to concentrate on is making sure it's feeding through okay. Because I do find on my Bernina that this presser foot is not ideal. It's quite small, the grooves, so it can get stuck sometimes. Reversey, reversey, trim those off. One of the friends that I was FaceTiming yesterday, she's American, she's from North Carolina, or Tennessee actually, her parents now live in North Carolina. Um, and uh, so I was, you know, I was outside in the garden FaceTiming her in the evening and the birds were so noisy and she was like, I'm finding these birds really aggressive. <laughs> I can't do her accent. But she's like, I'm finding them really aggressive. So I'm like, are you from out in the sticks in, in America? Do you not like have really noisy birds? She's like, I've been in London too long. I'm these really, I was like, I had to go inside because the birds were distracting her too much. It's like, most people love listening to the birds. I should go and uh, do a little uh, recording of the birds. Blah, blah. Okay, so let's close our zip. Can't with a poorly finger. All oh, satisfying, so satisfying. Oh, I'm slightly out. Slightly, slightly out. Ah. Oh. 
also from North Carolina. Look, slightly out, but it's not bad, is it, guys? It's very, very slight. It's about a millimetre out. And I've, act <laughs> I've actually gone, without realising, I've gone so close to my um, stitching that I don't need to finish that. But if you wanted to see how to finish the bottom of a zip, I think I did it on the Ava skirt. Or did I do it on the Betty? I can't remember. I think I might have done it on the Betty dress. But yeah, um, so you could go back. Um, where are my glasses from? These are Tom Ford. Super swanky, aren't they? Tom Ford. I do spend um, money on my frames because I generally keep them for a few years. Um, but yeah, thank you. Didn't know Tom Ford did glasses. You know, he does films, makeup, glasses. Does he ever do fashion? <laughs> Um, okay, so now that we've done that, and I'm happy with where they're lining up. Um, so, oops, I'm going to trim off the zip tape there because if you don't, that can end up getting um, in the way. So I'm just going to cut that off. And the same here. Oh no, I can't cut as much of them there. I seem to have flown a bit further. Then. To finish off the end there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep that folded and I'm going to pull that back over like that. And then like that. Okay? And then we're going to put the same on that side and make sure that when you do it, you can see this up close, but this folded edge here sits over that seam there just slightly because that is what we need for the um, waistband to catch through when we do a slip stitch, not a slip stitch, a sink stitch. Oh my goodness, all of my pins are bent. I have no good pins left. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Um, and then I'm going to put my um, uh, single arm regular zip foot on. Oh, someone else has got one in similar, Juliet blouse in a similar fabric. Oh. Twinsies. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna sew down here, okay? Um, so sewing close to the zip tape. And we're just sewing this little section where the waistband is. a bit of a problem that's not feeding there we go so I didn't really do a reverse there because it was stitching on the spot because it wasn't feeding through we'll pull it out it'll be easier for you to see up close when it's out of the machine what I've just done Oops. there and so we get that happening so that's the zip edge there and on the inside it's all lovely and neat so we do that on both sides I'm just moving my needle across my foot like that and then we flippy outy and there it is lovely and neat okay so now guys what we're going to do is we're going to pin the waistband um to we're going to kind of close it so we need to close the waistband down over there on the inside so first you have to pin it from the inside and then we'll transfer the pins to the outside so as you're pinning what you need to make sure is that the folded line here this edge here is sitting over the waist seam that you sewed the waistband to with you know when you first attached it so that needs to sit over by about two millimeters mm -hmm. so 
for those of you who are in the UK, Kirsty Alsop, you might know, you probably know who she is. She does location, location. She also does Kirsty's Handmade Christmas. And quite a few years ago, she did something called Kirsty's Vintage Home. Um, and it basically was crafts and things, like different crafters came on to um, show people how to make various things. And I was on a couple of her episodes. Anyway, she's doing a craft lockdown, um, like kind of craft lockdown um, program for Channel 4. I think it starts on Saturday around five o'clock. And she is um, going, they're going to be refeaturing some of the stuff that um, the episodes that I was in. So they called me the other day to be like, just letting you know, we're going to be using some of that footage. Is it OK? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I haven't seen that in ages. So, yeah, if I know which one um, I'm in, I'll pop it up on Instagram. Or I guess I can let you know afterwards and you can watch it or catch up if you're interested. It's not dressmaking, though. It's. I made this um, quilt in one of them, which was awful. It's not my fault. They designed fabric and they got it printed on this really nasty fabric. Um, so they like did a design and then it was printed. And then I did a baby blanket in my Clapham shop with Kirsty herself. We did um, a bit of sewing and it was such a hot day. Oh my goodness. Right, so now I've done that, I'm going to take one out at a time and put it back on the right side because we are going to sink stitch from the right side. Stitch in the ditch or sink stitch, depends. We're getting close to finishing. I'm all all messed up with time. Can someone tell me what time it is? Because <laughs> now I can't use the amount of time that I've been live to work that out. We're going to split on two videos. What time is it in the UK, please? Oh, 10 to 2. Oh, my goodness. Wowzers. How time flies, guys. Okie dokie. Thanks, guys. Right, so let's put the regular foot back on. And we're now going to stitch in the ditch. So what we want to do is stitch on this side, right up close to there, but on the trouser side, not the waistband. So the idea is you're going really in close there so you can't see it. And that will catch the waistband on the other side. I'm loving all these different times. Oh my gosh. It's 10 to 11 in Australia, 7.49 in the States, oh, but it, on Eastern time, it's 8.49, Eastern Standard Time. So it must be even earlier for, um, so is this the Eastern time, mid, mid, mid time? I don't know what it's called. And then I know there's Western Standard Time. Or is there just two time zones in the States? Sorry guys, if that's very um, ignorant of me. I just know we often talk about Eastern Standard Time and Western Standard Time, but it's so big. There surely is there somewhere in the middle that has their own time zone? Ah, Louisiana, 17. Uh, okay, 10 to nine in New York, 10 to 20 in Adelaide. Oh my gosh, there's four time zones in the US. There's Mountain, Central, Okay, we sit four. Wow. Oh my goodness. Thanks, guys. US Eastern, so Eastern Central Mountain Pacific. So, mountain. Wow. Mountain time. That's crazy. I've never heard of that. That's really bad, isn't it? I've not heard of that. I'm now going to Google it. When I find out something like that, I'm like, oh, I want to know about it more. Mountain Time is a great name, isn't it, Rosie? Sorry, guys, I'm just on Mountain Time. <laughs> Alaska Time and Hawaii Time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. And there's two time zones, surely, in Australia as well. Because Australia is very wide. <laughs> Mountain Time's flyover territory. Mm. 
Oh, wow, okay. Ooh. Guys, look what we've got on what topics we're covering. Oh, and we've got someone now from Saudi Arabia. What time is it in Saudi Arabia? You have three time zones in Australia. Wow, what do you call them? Not many people live in mountain time, <laughs> okay. I get it. So that's why you wouldn't see, oh, it's almost 4 p.m. in Saudi Arabia. There's 34 time zones in Oz. No. That's insane. Or was that three to four? If you want to watch our other videos, you can. They are all on our oops, four times in Australia. Okay, Chris. I was like, 34? <laughs> You'd be like just walking along a street. Oh, sorry, I'm into another time zone now. Oh, and I'm into another time zone. <laughs> okay. Right, we're getting to the end. A little reverse. Be careful not to go into your zip teeth. We're not going all the way to the end. And then we look from the inside. Oh, oops. Inside. Australian Western Standard Time, Australian Central Standard Time, and Australian Eastern Standard Time. Because that's not a mouthful. Thank you. So, there we go. Not so straight there, but anyway. Look, this is the perfect... No, it's not the perfect bit. Let me show you the perfect bit. Far too much concentrating on time zones for me to do that really neatly. But, to be honest, it's more the pressing there and the pinning. The stitching, you literally can't see it. So clever, that stitch. I love it. Okay, so guys, our trousers have taken shape. We now, all we have to do is the hem. So I'm just going to talk you through that because you guys can go away and try them on. Now that your waistband is on, you do need to um, go back and try them on just to check where they're sitting in terms of length. Um, I also need to do that. Here they are. Da, da, da. So nice waistband, nice and um, high waist. And then... What we would do on this, if you're happy with it, you can do two things. You can do a double hem, so you can press it over once um, by a centimetre and then press it over again by a centimetre and a half. Or you can do a single hem, which I believe I did on this. Yeah. Um, so you just do, um, um, you do an overlock all the way around the edge and then you just press it up once and stitch it down. I can't remember what the hem allowance is. It's probably 1.5 or two, but really it doesn't matter. The main thing is that when you're trying them on for length, you just decide what you're gonna use as your hem allowance and you pin that up and then decide if you're happy with that length and then shorten accordingly, or if you can afford to lengthen it through some of the hem allowance, um, do that. I wouldn't make your hem any less than 1.5 though, because you do need a bit of weight in the, in the hem um, just to help it sit better. So there we go, guys, we've made some ultimate trousers. And we need to give them a nice press along there just to crisp that up as well. So I'll wear those in the winter because they're gonna be warm right now. But yeah, thank you for sewing those with me. Now, before I go, I am gonna show you the fabrics and then I'm gonna show you this. So, oi, just bear with. spotty fabrics with me here because there's essentially that one I've got that and then I've also got it in like a cherry red with a white spot but I've got the other ones so this one which is so gorgeous this I've got an Elsie dress made up in this fabric and I absolutely love it um so yeah that one is a winner um and it's exactly the same quality as fabric as this okay so we've got that one and then we have got this one, which I have already cut myself off a meter, um, which is so cute and vintagey, isn't it? Lemons, lemons and flowers. So this one's uh, exactly the same again. They're all from the same supplier. Uh, and then the pink and purple gown and bold gown, we have got this one. Okay, so that could be nice with a white t-shirt and a pink cardi or something. Um, but yeah, they would work really well for quite a few of our patterns. They'd work well for the pencil skirt and they worked well from... Um, um, for the Elsie dress. 
And I'm so sorry, those of you that aren't in the, um, <laughs> when life gives you lemons, make clothing out of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. So these are all for sale. They're up live now. Um, I'm sorry that you can't buy them if you're outside of the UK. Um, but yeah, we will get that back. Um, we are going to do a special sale for you um, guys that aren't in the UK once we're, we're back on um, international shipping. So um, and, you know, we might be able to get some more fabrics back in for you as well so that you don't miss out on those. But yeah, I'm sorry. It's just at the moment it's too complicated. Anyway, right. Next thing this lining of my mini mini skirt so like so okay inside it looks like that so yeah email Teresa email um Rosie about that um and we'll see what we can do okay and so on the inside, there, yeah, they're stretched. This is what we made on Tuesday. Um, and that's how I did it. So I was talking to you about it before. So this is slightly shorter and um, they're wrong sides together. And you stitch them wrong sides together and join them at the waistband and then you put this on, okay? So that is how you do it. I didn't explain it very well. Um, yesterday as I was bleeding from my finger and I couldn't find it. So um, that's it for this week for dressmaking projects. Although tomorrow we're going to be doing the strawberry sweatshirt. I think I've got one here that I can show you the pattern. So our poppy and jazz pattern of the week is going to be this one tomorrow. Um, so um, we, um, yes, I'll be doing that at one o'clock. And then next week, uh, the schedule's slightly different. So on Monday, I'll be doing kids sewing at one. And then at two, I will be starting the pyjamas. So if you want to do the pyjamas with this, I'll be starting the pyjama bottoms on Monday at two. And then at one o'clock on Tuesday, I will be finishing the pyjamas and maybe starting the alderly top, which is a little um, buyer's cami top. And then um, finishing that on the Wednesday. So... That will mean, that, yes, the point is, is that we'll have some summer, summer pyjamas at the end of it. So we will have um, perfect for kind of uh, Lisa Comfort cotton lawns. I know a lot of you bought them in the um, sale. And if not, any other kind of cotton lawn or lightweight cotton that you've got is perfect for pyjamas. So you can buy both of those patterns on our website. And if you're a member of the Stitch School, you'll be able to access Alderly for free. Um, so, yeah. And I'm going to attempt doing bias, bias binding with you guys live. Whoopie doo. So thanks guys for joining. Maybe see some of you tomorrow. The rest of you I'll see next week. Um, and um, if you can, please do um, um, buy us a coffee from coffee.com. We can't obviously do our regular stuff at the moment at the shop. So you can... Um, you can, oh, Lord, sorry, waffle, waffle. I'm so, so many things people saying bye. I'm like, ah. So yeah, if you can afford to, please do um, support us um, with these sew alongs by doing that. Rosie's putting all of the, the um, notes up. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have given so much already. We really appreciate it. Bless you, Lorianne, you are so generous. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to everybody. And thanks for commenting, guys, and saying hi. It's always so lovely. It makes us all feel like we're all hanging out together, doesn't it? Great, guys. See you tomorrow.